Oh, I wanted to bring up the uh, for the custom fee thing. Like, what do we want to do with the UI for that? Because there's like a lot of different ideas in the pull request comments. Um, yeah, maybe I have to jump in now. Uh, as I wrote on GitHub, I I released the the requirement to have both. <laughs> uh, so my main um, intention to do that was that to be aware of the current fee environment and somehow display it on the user interface. So when I'm trying to send and use a custom fee, I would even that uh, in that case, I would like to know that what is the current fee environment. So if you are showing a tooltip for me that, okay, the one hour confirmation target is this and the two hour confirmation target is that and this kind of stuff, which we already have in the, in the view model, that would be fine for me. Oh no, please no. <laughs> it's a... Uh, I mean, my main point was we that already that have it. slider. Okay. Now I, I was reacting to something else. I thought you were talking about something else. My main issue is that I think it can, it, it's obvious, it should be obvious that when I go on the sand tub and I see the slider and I see the text box. Okay, so I start moving the slider while I click send, well, it's probably getting the information from the slider, it makes sense. But then, instead of start moving the slider, I start typing in the text box, two million Satoshi per byte. <laughs> uh, then, when I click on send, I don't really know what, what's going to be used. Is, is this the slider what's relevant, or what I typed, or... You know, the, maybe when the text box is not empty, but filled with valid data, the slider should be disabled. I think that that's, that would solve it. Yeah, wouldn't that was on my list of things to bring up for uh, one of the ideas to do with, so I agree. That's a wouldn't good it idea. be a possibility to uh, have both of them in sync when when I uh, use the slider uh, to populate the text box and vice versa? This is how Electrum is using it. Uh, and I kind of like it. But I think in the context of Wasabi, because you have to go into the settings and activate that manual fee. Um, and in Electrum, it's, I think, per default. Uh, I think it would be OK to remove the fee slider, because I don't think it's too necessary. I think that was a great idea from Dennis, actually. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. When you type in the text box or... The only issue is, you know, with Avalonia, things that, well, how can you update uh, both the text box and the slider from source code and from UI2? I think that can be figured out. Sometimes doesn't work as it's expected, but yeah, I think that's a great idea. Dennis, uh, Ben, did you understand what Dennis said? Yeah, so like if you move the slider, it'll set the text box, and if you set the text box, it'll move the slider for you. Right, so in coding terms, basically they have a binding to the uh, same value and mm -hmm. modify it. Yeah, it's just sometimes you said the blinding and it doesn't work as you expect. Yeah. <laughs> and they well, use different and, values because one's like a, a block target and the other one's like Satoshi's per byte. Exactly. I was about to say that uh, the slider is Bitcoin D smart fee. And that only has like the, what, three or four levels. Yeah, but when, uh, it's, it's okay. You, you just move it to the closest one. Right. Yes, yeah, it should be doable. 
but then we still have the issue, and I think that is that is more the larger issue that it just looks cluttered. Uh, it, it stretches out all the way or almost all the way to the right, because now there's the long fee slider, and then even longer the manual transaction fee box right next to it. Uh, so I think like the main issue for me here was was UX clutter that there's just too much going on. Now. I yes, I think I noted that it's a little bit out of place. I'm not sure how much I care about it because this is an advanced feature and you have to go on the settings and click to enable it. But yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely not uh, the most aesthetic. Yeah, yeah and I, as I said the last uh, time, I think we need to come up with a concept to um, switch between a uh, default or beginner's mode and an advanced mode. Um, but uh, this this has to be uh, approached holistically and we cannot uh, decide how, how to do this best with when looking at just one uh, single use case. So um, I'd, I'd uh, take this uh, with me and uh, try to find a way um, when I uh, have a look at the uh, the whole application structure and we, because I think there are more cases where we can uh, hide uh, more advanced features like this. Yeah, again, that's a great idea. Maybe the although I wouldn't go into to make this pull request like that, but yeah, maybe just just have in the settings uh, advanced mode enabled or disabled and uh, and we can hide a bunch of things that we don't really need that's uh yeah that's this would be a, the perfect example of what is advanced and what is not yeah 